Hi, this video is about my portable hard drive and how I fixed it to get my data off. Uh, this drive is pretty popular. I know a lot of people have them. It's a Seagate expansion portable drive. You could get over a terabyte of uh, data onto it. It's very inexpensive and it's pretty convenient. Well, one day at work, I pulled the drive out to get some files off that I needed and it just wouldn't work anymore. All that happened was the light came on the drive, but the computer wouldn't recognize it and I wasn't able to get any of the files off of it. I decided to look at the drive a little more closely to see what the problem was. I noticed the cable had a kink in it right at the connector, so I figured I had a bad cable. But I didn't have any of this type of cable around. I'd never seen it before. So I did a little bit of research, and I found out this is a USB 3.0 cable with a micro USB connector. Now, the only difference between the regular micro USB connector and this one is that it has extra data lines so it can transfer data at higher speeds. You can actually use a regular micro USB cable to hook up to the drive. The only difference is the data won't transfer as fast. Since I had a few micro USB cables lying around, I connected one to the drive and hooked it into the computer, hoping I can get my data off the drive. And the same thing, I couldn't access my files on the drive. Well, at this point I ruled out the cable was bad, so I figure I had some kind of hardware fault, which left me with the only option, open the drive up and find out what's wrong with it. First thing I noticed is that there's no screws to get the case opened. So this uh, case is probably some type of plastic clip mechanism. So I grabbed myself a, a pick and tried to find uh, some type of uh, opening. And I noticed one here at the top. And I ran my pick through it. And I was able to get the cover off. And if you have a close look here, these are the clips I'm talking about. The drive wouldn't come out of the case until I angled it a certain way and it just dropped right out. So I started inspecting the drive to see what could be wrong with it. One thing I noticed is that the connector for the cable is soldered onto the hard drive. In my past experience with portable drives, usually the hard drive has a daughter board connected to it. And if there's something wrong with the connector, you can just replace that daughter board and then the drive is back up and running again. Since this hard drive didn't have a daughter board, I crossed my fingers and hoped I wasn't going to lose the data on my drive and carefully unscrewed the main board from the hard drive to try and see what was wrong with it. The first thing I did was take some close-up photos of the board. I noticed around the connector that there were some cracks on the big solder joints. Let me zoom in on the photo I took here and you can see it more clearly. There's one here on the right-hand side. You can see up here that it's cracked. And also the one in the center, you can see on the outside of the joint, it has also cracked. Now the one on the left hand side doesn't look that bad. But since I'm going to have to get a soldering iron out to fix the other two joints, I might as well re-solder all the big joints that are part of this connector. You see, these joints actually give the connector mechanical strength. So when you try to plug a cable into the drive, it doesn't break off. I re-soldered all the big joints and plugged the drive back into the computer. The drive came up and then all of a sudden disappeared. It was intermittent, so in order to avoid any data loss, I disconnected the drive from the computer and that's when I came to the realization that there's definitely something wrong with this connector causing the malfunction of this hard drive. So I decided I was going to go back and re-solder the connector, this time on both sides. This is what I've soldered already and these joints are pretty big and easy to do with the naked eye. Now let me flip the board over, and I wish I had a penny so you could get a perspective of how small these components are and the, the other joints I was going to have to do here, these data lines. This stuff is very tiny, and that's when I sort of said to myself, I'm not equipped to do this right now. What I need is an electronic microscope. So I broke down and bought one. I got the unit, assembled it. It was actually pretty easy to do and everything was up and running fairly quickly. Now I was quite anxious to try out this new tool. So I grabbed an old electronic board and just decided to do some practice soldering and seeing how much of a difference this thing would make. I couldn't believe how good this microscope was. The screen was nice and big and the image on it was sharp and clear. I really wasn't expecting that. But I did run into a bit of a problem, but it's not with the microscope. 
I didn't realize how much I need to see my hands when I'm soldering. Looking at a screen, it's it, it just gives you quite a different feel. It, it, it just doesn't feel right. Now I had to break that habit of having to look at my hands to see what I'm doing, and instead get used to looking at the screen when I'm soldering. That was quite an adjustment for me. I don't know if you've tried out these electronic scopes. Uh, comment below if you've experienced the same thing. Another nice feature this microscope has is that it can record what you see on the screen so you can play it back later. All this video you see of me soldering came from the microscope. So first thing I did was I decided to take the solder to the joints, those big joints again, but uh, the solder wouldn't flow very well. It was uh, very blobby, so I decided to grab some uh, flux. And here's an example of the board sort of moving out of the way uh, because I, for whatever reason, wanted to see my hands with the soldering iron, so I kept pulling it back. Now I uh, applied some heat to this. It's not too bad. The thing I'm not uh, very uh, happy about is a lot of the joints are dull. Typically I expect them to shine like, uh, like it is right now. And then you see as soon as I take away the heat, it gets dull. I decided to check out, see what the joints were like. I cleaned them up a bit and I'm pretty happy with that. So I flipped the board over and now I wanted to get to those data lines and the components on the other side. So I gave it a bit of flux and is going to get just get ready to uh, hit this thing with a bit of solder and um here we got the soldering iron not the greatest of tips but it actually that's all i had at the time so just touched up a bit of those things now you see i bridged let me pull back the uh the board here uh you can see i bridged uh two of those components that's going to haunt me you'll see in a few minutes here um then i decided to touch up all the rest of the joints Everything's flowing pretty good with the flux, which is, uh, as they always say, flux is your friend. It's actually a very, very good chemical when you're soldering. Uh, again, I, I just tried to take the excess solder off of there with the soldering iron, but it just wouldn't go. So I grabbed a bit of a solder wick. Now, solder wick's really good because it also acts as a heat sink, so you don't heat up the board as much. And I was hoping to get the things apart, but it didn't. So what I did is I flipped the board over, and this is another soldering iron that I have. I was hoping I could get uh, the component to stick in place. I just want to tack it down right now, and then I'll give it a good hit of solder, but boy was it ever difficult. So then I just grabbed the regular soldering iron and a pick to try and put it in position. It would not go. It was like it was a, a magnet. So I just moved around the components a bit to try and get them where they're supposed to be. And it was very difficult uh, to not clean things up because I was worried about dropping these components and I don't have any donor boards kicking around. So it was very um, uh, nerve wracking knowing that if I lose these components, I'm done. So eventually I got this one to stick in a nice spot here and then I tacked it up and I bridged it up again, but I was able to save myself. Grabbed the solder wick out again to try and suck up anything that was excess. So I was pretty happy with that one component in place. Now this one here, same thing. Uh, I touched up the pads with some solder, hoping that once I just got the component close to it with a bit of heat, it would actually stick in place. And unfortunately, it was like a magnet. No matter what pick I used or tweezers, it always seemed to stick to it. So here's one side with tweezers and the other one with a, a different pick. But you can see it just keeps sticking to whatever the heck I want. And I could never put it in the right spot that I wanted it to stay in. So here I grabbed the soldering iron and my tip is just basically disappearing. I should have got a new tip, but I didn't have one. Um, there, I was able to sort of stick it here, uh, stick it in place. I thought I did. Uh, and I just want to tack it down just so it doesn't move anymore. And see, I just thought I had it, and again, just just a little bit of a touch, and, and it just moves all over the place. And I'm just going back down. This is one of my very first times trying to do this stuff. It was amazing how just a small touch is sort of amplified with these small, small components. So here, I finally got it to tack down, so it won't move anymore. And then what I did is I fluxed all the connections, so I could flow some solder and get a really solid joint that I'd be happy with. And then I just gave it a quick touch with the soldering iron that had a bit of solder on it. 
and that flowed this solder to the right points and I was pretty happy with it. Now the other side of the connector, you're probably looking at that there, it's uh, not the greatest. I cleaned up the connection, everything stuck to the board, nothing disappeared with the uh, brush, so I knew that the connections were good. And then I decided to uh, reassemble everything and plug it back into the computer. And when I did, I got that famous sound and the light came on and I was able to copy all the files off of the drive. So I did that right away in case the drive would fail on me again. I was able to get all the files off the drive and I was pretty happy with that. Well, once I got the data off the drive, it got me thinking, how did this happen in the first place? And then it came to me. Whenever I transport my drive, I always left the cable attached to the hard drive. And I suspect what ended up happening is that cable would flex in my backpack when I was moving around and probably broke those solder joints on the board. I was lucky the damage wasn't that bad and I was able to fix it. Not one of my better soldering jobs, but at least I got the drive operational and I was able to get my files off of it. So from now on, whenever I transport my hard drive, I'm going to remove the cable. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.